Hello, welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Quark Express. My name is Martin Turner, and today we're talking about importing from Microsoft Word. Now, over the years, I would say that 90% of all the documents I've ever published have begun in some way with a Word document or had a Word document imported into them. Word is part of the currency of the digital age. Now, there's an old format, .doc, which Word does not save anymore unless you specify that it should, but you may have old documents in that format. Quark Express currently imports .docx, that's the standard Word format, but it will not import .docs. If you're having problems with this tutorial, check that your documents are .docx. If they're not, just open them in Word or some compatible application and save them as .docx. Let's go to the screen. So what I've got here is just a plain uh, Quark Express document and it's got automatic uh, pages turned on. Uh, it's got uh, only the very basic style sheets and it's got only the very basic uh, colors that come with every document. Well, uh, underneath I've got another document which is uh, in Microsoft Word. I wrote this years ago uh, when I used to work in the health service in the UK uh, and it's got a couple of features in there. I, I added today in uh, just a couple of web links so you can see those. I put in a footnote, it's got a, a few tables, it's got uh, style text, you can see these, the title is over here. Um, it's, it's got, of course, Word builds in thousands of its own title, of its own style sheets anyway, but we're just using a few here. It's got a picture uh, that looks like pretty low resolution, fairly standard I'm afraid with Word documents that people paste into them pictures which are far too low res resolution and expect you to make something out of them. And then at the end we've got uh, a foot, an end note uh, down here and earlier on we have a footnote. Well let's import that and see what happens. So file import and I'm going to go to the document here. And if you work with the options turned off, you'll just see that. I can see a different view of that. I can even look at it like that on a Mac, obviously. PC is slightly different. But if you turn options on, as I have now, uh, you get convert quotes, well, we, we know that we've used that a lot. Include footnotes, that was new in Quark Express 2016. Include a static footnotes is new in 2017, and that allows you to, rather than importing Word's footnotes as Quark's footnotes, just to bring them in a static text. For particular kinds of formatting, that may be essential. We're going to include tables. We'll include the style sheets. You've got to think carefully about doing that. So normally, if I'm starting from scratch on somebody else's document, I might do that uh, just to see uh, what's going on. If it's one of my documents and I've carefully prepared it in Word with style sheets, which I might do, then I would turn that on and use it generally. But often uh, it's better not to use that because you're going to get all kinds of Word rubbish in. But we're going to keep it on for right now uh, and have a look further. So what else do we have? Well, we've got include hyperlinks uh, over here. Again, uh, been around in Quark Express for quite a while and include inline pictures, which I think came in a couple of years ago. So uh, we're going to do open and see what happens. Now the first thing always happens is it's going to say, hang on, you've got an, a normal style sheet in Word, always does, and you've got a normal style sheet in Quark Express. Which should I use? You can choose to rename it, you can use to auto rename, uh, particularly useful if you're going to do it for everything. You can use the new style sheet, you can use the existing one. Let's use the new one uh, for now, though we're going to come back to that in a minute. Well, what have we got? The first thing you'll see is it's imported all these different style sheets. It's done paragraph style sheets and it's also done character style sheets. And if I now click on the title one and just edit that, you'll see that it's correctly associated title character with uh, the style sheet of the paragraph. Now, if your organization or the organization you're, you're designing for uses a structured uh, approach to Word, this can be very helpful. If people just do ad hoc things, then you're probably going to want to discard uh, those uh, style sheets sooner or later. Well, what else have we got? Here I've got some hyperlinks. Now, if I go to my window hyperlinks panel, I'll see what there is. And you see it's brought them in correctly, it's hyperlinked them correctly. Uh, and if I just edit that, it hasn't given them a name. So I can now give that a name, I'll call it my website, and that will now appear. I can do the same thing for 
uh, my email. Now, one of the things I really hate about Word and its formatting is that it always gives this unpleasant color blue to anything it thinks looks like a web address. So let's go to that and see what it is. So, okay, it's normal style sheet, see that, but it's got a character style of hyperlink. Let's go there and we're gonna turn off the underline and we're gonna turn off the blue. Entirely unnecessary. What's happening now? Well, it's gone off Un, it's gone off blue, but it's still underlined. Why is this? Well, if you go to view, view set output preview, then you'll see it vanishes. So Quark Express is currently, if I go back to authoring view, so I'm, I'm going to view, view sets, and that just turns on or off a number of these things here. Um, but it's showing me there's a hyperlink there. And if I now come to export it as PDF, you'll see that if I go to the options, uh, hyperlinks is currently turned on, export uh, include hyperlinks, it will just include any, any hyperlink defined. But when it does export it, it will not include that unpleasant uh, blue line. So let me just go, hang on, I've got caught there, go back to output preview. That's what I'm gonna see. Uh, for now, uh, it's just gonna show me uh, what's there for me to help see the hyperlink. So, okay, what else have we got here? Um, now, I've got some tables here, and you'll see that this table has come in. Uh, it's now anchored as a text table. So let me just click on the item tool, and you'll see that is uh, moving correctly as a text table, uh, as it would. I can't move it out. I could, of course, cut it, and then paste it again. But for now, it's just a text. So it's moving anchored in the text as we saw the other week. Uh, what about my style sheets? Well, it's brought in correctly that it's bold, but it's not given that a separate style sheet. So we might want to go back with find and replace uh, later on and change those if we want to. Okay, uh, what's happening here? I've got a subtitle with a subtitle character. Um, my pictures come in, but as I thought, again, this has come in as uh, a anchored picture, but it's come in at the same resolution as the Word version. Okay, if I, if I really zoom it down, then it doesn't look too bad, but it's pretty clear this is not going to be acceptable uh, in print. So I'm gonna to have to go back and get that graphic again. Uh, all too common with Word, people copy things from all over the place, uh, and the, the resolution is too low. Of course, this is actually a graphic which I developed, uh, but when people put graphics in with Word, it's always worth just checking that the graphic is actually their copyright because Word users are inveterate uh, plagiarizers, I'm afraid to say, and you see all kinds of things coming in. Sometimes it's clip art, you really do not want to see clip art in a finished document, and sometimes it's just stolen, or should we say borrowed, from somebody else's work. You do not want to have that in a published document. So, okay, almost there. Uh, what else have we got? So I've got a, a footnote here, and as you can see, this has come across as a, a proper Quark Express uh, footnote. Uh, let's just go and look at footnotes, endnotes. Uh, that should be incorrectly. Yeah, you'll see that's a footnote correctly. Uh, and the endnote has come out the same way. Now, normally that's what you want, but as we saw on the options, sometimes you want it just a static text, then you can play with it. Well, what is there uh, else to look at in this document? Uh, for now, nothing really. That's fairly simple. That's most of the options. Now, let's just delete this and start again. You might say, well, why are you doing that? Well, the answer is that I'm afraid uh, very often people will give you a document in Word uh, and then they will come back uh, a couple of weeks later and say, I've entirely rewritten the document. You can just import it, can't you? And you're left to start again. Well, not quite. If you've used the style sheets which come with it, you can pull that document back in uh, and it will ready self-format. So let's do that. We're gonna do again, file import. And uh, I haven't actually changed this, but it, it makes no difference. And again, I'm, I'm leaving include style sheets on here. And what I'm now gonna do is I'm going to repeat for all conflict, I'm going to use existing. 
And what will now have happened is it will not have brought in word style sheets, it'll have kept quarks. Let me just do that again. But this time I'm going to go to the title and I'm going to change that to uh, Frutiger, uh, which is in fact the correct font for this particular document. Uh, we'll make that Frutiger ultra black. And I'm going to uh, change the normal style sheet to uh, Frutiger. Uh, and we'll make that Frutiger Roman. Uh, I'm going to delete that. And actually, I'm not going to delete it. I'm going to change it to the correct one, which is actually uh, Pantone uh, 300, which is the official color of that organization. Uh, and I'm going to delete that and that and change that to Pantone 300. Now, let's import it again and see what happens. So, top 10 uh, frustrations, in it comes, and now I'm gonna say use existing for all conflicts. What's happened? Well, as you can see, the, well not a very good title uh, choice, but, but it's, it's retained the style sheet which I put in in Quark Express rather than re-importing Words Calibri, which is almost certainly the wrong font. Okay, uh, what else has happened here? Well, um, you can see it's, it's picked up the correct color, but it's imported these colors in again. So I didn't actually change it for this style sheet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna uh, delete that one, uh, apparently it's not used, delete this one, uh, and see what happens. Actually, it has in fact uh, correctly identified everything. So there we are. It may seem fairly simple, uh, but if you're working with documents in Word and people keep on sending in new versions, using this method where you retain the style sheets from Word and then use existing can save you doing the whole job over and over again. And in fact, if you have work which comes back regularly, you may find that you can educate the client by sending them a Word template with your style sheets in, and everything will come back every time perfect. Uh, Word is a, a little bit of a random pasteboard of ideas for many people, so you're always gonna get some odd things happening. But by using the options carefully, you can manage those hyperlinks and have them work properly in your PDF output without having the ugly blue lines. You can have the style sheets work correctly uh, and you can even have your footnotes and endnotes uh, function appropriately. The one thing I'd say almost never works is the pictures. Extremely rare that a Word user will have pasted in the picture at the correct resolution in the correct format. I hope that's been helpful. It's a bit bread and butter. You might say, well, that's all very simple. I knew all of that. I hope some of it's been useful to you. Uh, look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, happy corking.